All right, here we go. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Kristen. Um, and this is my introduction video that I promised I would do. Um, so it's Monday and um, yeah, today's the day. <laughs> okay, I'm not good at video making. So um, I'm gonna tell you a little about myself and I have this handy paper to keep me on track here so I am 28 um, I am the host the born name you know and um, I live in central southern USA um, and I want to share a little about my journey through psychology since obviously I've had this disorder since childhood, um, but not knowing it. And so I wanna share some of that. And I also wanna share like my hobbies, my passions, which are different and the same. Um, what I do for work and some about my spirituality because that's just like a really crucial aspect to me. Um, so I don't know where to start, but I'm gonna cover those things. So maybe I'll start with hobbies and passions and stuff like that, and we'll get to the journey in a second. So um, my hobbies, um, uh, as you might have heard from the other videos, I'm, you know, I'm I'm not as into the same things as Alea and Chris. Um, but I am kind of, it's just in a different way. So like, I'm into geology. I love geology and just earth weather and other planetary weather and studying nature like in the big forces and how that's made. Um, so I like crystals in that sense, you know? And I'm looking over here to like my crystal table where LA recorded um, as far as like, I don't know why I'm comparing myself, but if you watch my Chris introduction, you know, I don't have an interest in makeup and all that stuff. And like, I mean, my nails, you know, I, I if I want to paint them black or like a color or something, I'm cool for that. I'm glad I'm not biting them anymore. Really, that's all I care about. Um but i'm i'm more into like not putting time into the exterior um and just like doing my hobbies my passions activities and like i don't really pay a lot of attention to like like brushing my hair or you know i just kind of like oh okay there we go looks fine to me i mean i don't need to brush it and straighten it and do all this stuff when it actually looks better to me like this like I just got out of bed and just parted it differently and there we go one second and like versus Chris likes to really like do it you know sometimes curl it and all these things so um that's kind of how I, I differ I could go a long time how I differ but if you just watch the videos, I guess it'll make more sense. Um, so my hobbies, I am into art. Um, Chris said that she has all this, the like creativity. I disagree with that. Like, yes, she has a lot of creativity um, in, in like really sparkly art, you know, like just nice art. Um, but I have the most hyper-focused way of doing it so I actually get the art done and am artistic in the sense of like I like to do realism art um and I am not that good anymore I used to be a lot better um but I I I don't I have so like I get hyper focused if I'm like in the mood to do it I'm like doing it and if I'm not in the mood to doing it or like it changes day by day because th those realism painting takes like weeks you know so if I'm not in the mood it might never get done um, if I'm switching a lot or whatever but I do love art I, I like flower arrangements like adding some color and some life 
into um, the house and like as gifts, like giving them as gifts. So like, let me show you a little bit about like what I have. I have all of these little like jars that I keep in here, which some of them are really pretty. Um, and I find them at like thrift stores and I, I repurpose them. I have like moss and straw and um, there's some more jars and like wooden, wooden objects to paint. So like I'm really artsy and like sometimes since I know I don't have the time to finish things, I like, I just, I'll collect art that I can get done with, without a lot of time, basically. Here's picture frames, <laughs> lots of picture frames, so that way I can like make homemade gifts. So I'm really thoughtful, I'm a thoughtful person. I like to make homemade gifts, I like to make homemade cards. I have a whole nother um, art station. It's kind of messy over here, but so like I have my paints and all my stuff, but th this is full of like card making supplies. I like, let's not open that one. If they're not organized, card making supplies and stuff. I don't know. I don't like to do all that. I just don't really feel the time. Like the, I don't know, the motivation. I deal with depression. So that that's something to know about me is like everything about me I don't really do it a whole lot um, for the last couple years because I've been really depressed, like going through depression, um, whether I like it or not. I don't like it and I, I think it's silly. I think it should be done with um, by now. I've tried enough medications and I'm in therapy and it's like, come on, let's just like feel optimistic that I'm on the right track at least. And um, I, I, I do feel that way sometimes, but um, I just ebb and flow so much. Like half my week I'm depressed and half of it I'm not. I'm kind of, uh, well, I'm diagnosed bipolar, rapid cycling bipolar. Um, so that has an effect on my mood. Um, doesn't seem to affect all of the alters, which is interesting. So more about my hobbies and passions and my work, which all kind of go together, hopefully, but kind of not. Um, I'm really into yoga. Uh, I'm a, a registered, trained yoga teacher. Um, I like to do one-on-ones. I'm an introvert, so I really like what's your personal goals and needs and meeting those in a one-on-one -on -one yoga sessions. Um, I really prefer to do that over like video chat because um, I can I can watch and observe and do all the same things and I can meet people from all over the place um, and the way I'm taught is not by you, the person like you observing me it's by hearing you know like ground your four corners of your feet you know, activate your inner thighs, lift your hands up, like saying those kind of words, lift your hands up above your head and down on your exhale, saying those words without having to watch anybody. Um, so that you're working in your own body. So I'm really passionate about, it's a dynamic Kathy yoga that I'm trained in and I teach. Um, I'm passionate about weightlifting and like bodybuilding, but I haven't been doing it since February since my car accident and concussion um, my motivation and depression and a lot of my symptoms got worse then memory issues alters coming forth stuff like that so um, yeah I just I don't I, I don't do it a lot like every day I'm like I'm gonna get to the gym like seriously every day I'm like tomorrow I'm gonna go on a bike ride or do yoga or dance or get to the gym and I don't so uh, today I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, I am. Like, I'm just depressed. I'm really, um, it's not like a sad depression. I just, like, have no motivation to do the things that I, none, no motivation. Gone. Negative. And I'm, like, exhausted, like, chronic fatigue, like, tired. Um, I disassociate a lot like I'm 
surprised I can talk this long as Christian, which is really helpful for me. So other passions and hobbies, uh, we really like to garden. Me and my husband, I'm married. He's my passion, huh? And I like to garden. I love reading. I do have quite a book. I'm looking at my bookshelf. Quite a book collection, which I won't go over right now. But I love reading. I love ancient um, history and like really ancient history, like their original tribes and their original pagan beliefs and their original pottery and like anything original I love. Um, I also really have an affinity for like Vedic knowledge and wisdom, um, like the Bhagavad Gita and like all the sacred Vedic texts. I've studied Sanskrit to help myself understand a little bit more about um, the meaning of those texts so I'm pretty devoted to um, yeah like Eastern wisdom um, I'm into Eastern medicine Ayurveda natural herbalism and natural medicine um, and natural ways of living and that's kind of why like I don't like to wear makeup or like do a whole lot because I can tell you all these reasons why like not brushing your hair all the time or not like is good for you and while like not showering every single day and heat processing is good for you and so I mean I think um you know I'm wiser than my 14 year old Chris self you know um my co-host I'm a little wiser but she just feels like oh we don't want the world to see that we're depressed because the world will treat you differently and they won't look at you nice and they won't engage you in public and we need to lift your depression, you know? So it's kind of like a bipolar battle with her, you know? Um, but I appreciate that she cares and she wants to do that for me. Um, but sometimes it's good to just like feel my own feelings, like, without an altar popping in and to feel like, oh, I feel really depressed because like, like today, for example, I'm having really bad trauma flashbacks and I have them a lot. Um, we, the system, are in trauma therapy um, three times a week with life coaching on it for the disassociated aspects happening now that are newer since a car accident and mainly since sobriety so I, I used to smoke um, quite a bit of pot just to medicinally handle my flashbacks and anxiety and to function in a job and it actually brought me from a really spastic state to normal and I also feel really guilty about it um, it's, even though it's like a natural medicine and I thought like oh well no one can even tell because I'm normal and they would think I'm on drugs if I wasn't which I think is true um, I've always wanted to be sober so I'm like going on eight weeks totally sober from that uh, being like a daily medicinal habit that I do in a dose to stay normal um, and I'm also sober from all alcohol, so I don't like compensate or whatever. Um, and that has really brought forth the, like more than one voice has become clear in my head. Like I've had a voice in my head talking with me that I don't talk back. I'm like, that's just my subconscious feelings and they're all negative and dark and depressed and that's dark moon Kristen who's 15 she's an altar who does step forth but I'm I'm not really conscious of her when that's happening those memories are a little split off and people will say I say things that I don't think I could ever say or do um, and that's not to make an excuse like it's just I I, I sometimes will be conscious of like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, why am I acting like this? What am I saying? Like, and it reminds me of just that voice that shames me and guilts me. And that's another video that's Dark Moon, Kristen, um, who's 15. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. So I was trying to get to my journey in psychology. So...
Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself and then I'll be done because I'm trying to get my video shorter to like 20 minutes. So max. I, I can have a hard time like with linear speech a little bit. So my journey through this, obviously I grew up <clears throat> with trauma. So um, in this video and intro, I'm not gonna go into it, but um, I wanna say a little bit about it. Um, I grew up with family trauma um, from m males and my family. Um, and then I later in life had teenage early trauma at 14 from neighbors. Um, and then I had what I call my military trauma at age 19. Um, so all a lot of re-traumatizing events. Um, and the age 19 trauma was very severe. Um, it developed complex PTSD. I practically had Stockholm Syndrome. Um, and I say practically, I think I, I did, but um, not diagnosed, so I don't know. But um, it was a military trauma with my, my domestic partner who happened to be my recruiter, and he was my recruiter first. And um, yeah, I, I get paranoid to talk about it, so I'm not gonna go into that, but most of my flashbacks and nightmares are about that situation. Um, um, it was somewhat like a hostage situation for a long time through like horrible weather, sorry, trigger warning, through horrible weather scenarios and like learning pre boot camp things like how to shoot and it um it was really re triggering on the sexual abuse side because of um he himself had been to war twice and I'm um, getting off on my trauma and I said I wasn't gonna do that. Yeah. I need an outlet sometimes to talk about that, but that's not gonna be here. It's gonna be with my therapist. So I had that crazy trauma and that really split off um, where Alea was created and Akasha the tiger and Noble the dove who really was just a form of Michael which was created in fifth grade. So let's like back up. See I'm a nonlinear talker so I named all my traumas and their major years so let's back up to my treatment. Um, I had like anorexia diagnosed Ednos though um, by the time I was 14. By the time I was 15, I was removed from high school to focus on my mental health. Focusing on is like never a good thing. You should focus on anything but your mental health if your mental health is struggling like severely. Um, I didn't see a psychologist um, at that time on focusing on my mental health. I just stayed home. Um, alone and I um, got on medication and the medication was supposed to be the answer uh, they didn't know about my pretty serious traumas and abuses of my childhood they just diagnosed me with what my father had been diagnosed with that year who lived a state away but tried to kill himself and was all depressed and he was diagnosed bipolar and so they said it's it's genetic you know you 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 seem all over the place and and so I was diagnosed bipolar and put on bipolar meds which um for a little while only ever for like a month or two help some side effects of them like sedation help and then I like lose it and have meltdowns that happens a lot with almost any meds I try um so I I was having very tumultuous family relationships with my mother and I moved out at 15 and um, I didn't have any health care or any way to get meds or treatment so um, that was how I remained unless an emergency happened I would have to call like a hotline and go get admitted in a mental hospital so I have been admitted in mental hospitals um, how many times one, two, three, four, five, 
five times um, throughout the years. Um, and sometimes in the beginning, I just kind of faked that I was like actually suicidal because I had no insurance and they wouldn't let me in otherwise. And then I would tell them like about my experiences and I've, I've read the notes from that and they're kind of funny. It's like thinks people from another dimension are trying to pull her in. Like all the signs were there. Um, I felt that I was having conversations and talking to other people in my head. Um, and so I was always diagnosed like psychotic NOS, like not otherwise specified. We don't know why is she psychotic. We don't know, but she seems psychotic. But then as I got older, you know, after that and bipolar and generalized anxiety disorder and social anxiety disorder and all of those things, um, I, um, so I got distracted because I heard like a car door outside. So this might be a short intro. I might leave you hanging if someone walks in. Um, I got diagnosed borderline personality disorder. Um, I've just been diagnosed a million things and um, I just got tired of being diagnosed a million things and so all I would really report would be the worst things like I'm suffering from extreme panic attacks I'm suffering from um, depression like and and I didn't want to talk about my trauma I really didn't it was I had a lot of shame um, I felt like I caused it myself like I put myself in all those situations um, and so no one really pinpointed that things were trauma related, but I finally did get diagnosed with PTSD at 19. Um, and, uh, along with bipolar, of course. And, um, I got diagnosed with complex PTSD two years ago. So I skipped, like, I decided from age nine or 20 to like 25 to just not do any treatment, no medication, no psychi like psychologist, no therapy. I got really into meditation and yoga and herbalism and smoking way too much pot and drinking and you know, just self-medicating and also trying to do healthy things. And um, being really spiritual, I like became like a Hindu and a Buddhist Hindu and like thought I was oh so wise and like channeling like rishis and um, I got into shamanic journeying where I started to meet Noble, my dove, and Akasha, my tiger. The only two animals that every single time are there and I've met a lot of different characters and things in the inner world um, not, not a whole lot but I've met them but um, only the dove and the tiger are like there by my side the whole time um, they are altars of mine the dove is is a part of Michael who wasn't able to speak with me hasn't hasn't spoken except once in journaling um, since fifth grade when I used to become him with the toddler voice um, I'll do a video about Michael um, I don't know if he'll speak or not he is no longer a toddler he's 19 so he has yet to come in front um, but he's an archangel sort protector um, no not like the real one obviously but like takes that form and he controls what Chrissy my little who's five can say and do and the memories that she's willing to let me know about um, and so Noble is a silent dove and reminds me to be quiet and like coos and like is named Noble because she, well, it, it's a she form in the dove form, I believe, but I'm not really sure. It could be a man. I've never really known. It's a bird, you know, like, and it's literal, like in real life, I wouldn't know. Like, I don't really know if it's a boy girl or agendered or whatever but the dove noble like 
I used to think didn't like me because like you're not gonna come in the inner world and take care of us you're not gonna do this I know you you're gonna think you're crazy and you're not gonna commit to journeying inside the inner world um, and so here I am getting off of my animal altars we talk about that a different time but yeah that's my journey I started schmick journeying and meditating and and there was all these signs um, of altars there but I just kind of played it off to like trance state meditation states but it eventually um, bothered me because doing yoga training and meditation training four years ago um, I would have like the tiger and have like these images and inner world stuff and conversations going on and so I received guidance from a monk teacher of a direct student of Thich Nhat Hanh. it was amazing on what to do to meditate to move past that um, but it seems that after my car accident and sobriety even on really high medication for psychosis that I now have a an emergence of my altars and so that's kind of my journey in like a super nutshell because this video is 26 minutes um, and those are my hobbies and passions and that's me and if you have any questions or comments please comment below um, I'm on Instagram uh, the ether system right and um, I'm on Facebook which I'm really excited about it's anonymous right and it's Alea wants to be like so present socially on Facebook so the it's Alea Ether A L A Y A Ether E T H E R um, I'm on like support groups on there and stuff I'm just trying to make friends and get some support and like really connect to real life people because I don't have a lot of friends in real life at all and I deal with life like we all do 